Hello you absolute legends. On the 18th of January 2020, the speedrunner Cosmic set a new world record for Super Mario Bros. with a time of 4 minutes, 55 seconds and 646 milliseconds. This was a monstrous run, perfectly executing every strategy and finishing off the run with one of the fastest endings ever seen. This world record was a pretty big deal when it was achieved. Cosmic had been grinding the game for over 8 years, and while he already had a long history of breaking historic milestones, this most recent record seemed to be at the very edge of what was attainable by human players. Super Mario Bros. is so ridiculously optimized by this point that the only way you are going to save further time is by introducing strategies that for many years have been considered simply out of the question. Cosmic's run, as is tradition with new Super Mario records, amassed a ton of attention. The video sits at over 2 million views on YouTube, and very few games in the speedrunning realm could ever compete with Mario in terms of overall mass appeal. Super Mario Bros. resides in the very upper echelon of games where the world records are universally cherished whenever they happen. So it may surprise you to learn that on the 23rd of October, the Brazilian speedrunner Lokuki stunned everyone when he tied Cosmic's record. This was truly shocking, as only a week before, his personal best was still a full 3 seconds behind. I don't think anyone was expecting it to happen this soon, and if it did, you would assume it would be one of the existing top players who had been grinding hard. Lukuki seemingly came out of nowhere and achieved this incredible feat after only several days of trying. However, weeks later, Lukuki's record still wasn't showing on the ranks. Despite the fact that there was no clear evidence of cheating, the only evidence the run ever happened remained the video itself and a post on our speedrun. In any other circumstance, a run like this would essentially be accepted and verified almost immediately. But this is no ordinary circumstance, and Lukuki is no ordinary speedrunner. The context in which this record was achieved is nothing short of bizarre, and no one has any clear idea about what should be done. The problem is not only the strange way in which the time was achieved, but also the history of the runner himself. In order to know the best way to proceed, there are a couple of very important questions that need to be answered. I'm going to try to present the entire story in an unbiased way, and I want you to come to your own conclusion and let me know in the comments how you think this situation should be handled. Let's begin. Now before we go on, we are only a couple of weeks away from 2021, and a New Year's resolution I want everyone to have is to learn a new skill. And what better place to learn than Skillshare. Skillshare is an epic online community that hosts thousands of classes where you can learn pretty much anything you can think of. Whether you want to tackle something completely new or take your existing talents to the next level, Skillshare has got you covered. My own New Year's resolution is to improve the editing in my videos, so I'll be going through Skillshare courses to learn new techniques. I'm going to start with the course Creative Video Storytelling and Editing by Nikki Stevens, as I really want to focus on creating more emotion in the way I tell stories. Skillshare Premium is extremely affordable at less than $10 a month, and you can even grab a free trial by being one of the first 1,000 legends to click the link in the description. I died record? What? I tied record! I tied record! What the fuck? What the fuck? On the 23rd of October, the speedrunner Lukuki tied the record for the fastest completion of Super Mario Bros. It was an incredible run, as was Cosmic's run of the same time achieved earlier in the year. This world record tie appeared to come out of nowhere, and Lukuki's previous personal best was relatively far away from the top players, sitting at 4 minutes, 56 seconds and 878 milliseconds. Technically it's just over a second slower, which doesn't seem to be a massive amount of time, but it put him at 21st place, and bridging that extra second to join the exclusive group of top players is extremely difficult. Lukuki did have some experience with the game though, competing in the much less popular Super Mario Bros. category extensions. These are random challenges that speedrunners compete in for fun, like trying to beat the last level as quickly as possible, or collecting 500 coins. These fun categories aren't as heavily contested, but they do provide players with a novel way to practice specific skills. And given that Lukuki holds the joint record of completing 8-4, he obviously has some skill. 
but it doesn't really matter how much skill you have. If you want to compete for the any percent world record, you are going to have to grind the game for many hours. Every single one of the best players has put in thousands of attempts to get where they are. Lekuki's progression is not typical at all. In fact, it is extremely atypical, enough to raise concerns over its legitimacy. Speedrunning communities revolve heavily around trust, and new records are always met with skepticism when they are achieved by lesser known players. Lekuki certainly did not have a history of top level play, and had in no way shape or form developed the community's trust as a top player. His previous record submissions only included two runs, a 4.58 achieved over a year ago, and the 4.56 achieved a week before his new record. This always leads to runs being heavily scrutinized, and this world record is no exception. Lukuki's run has a lot going for it though, and the proof he did provide is above and beyond what is normally considered acceptable. His hands are visible throughout the entire run, and afterwards, he shows the controller cord plugged into the console, even going as far as entering the second quest and executing a few jumps, establishing that he does have control over Mario. Try as they may, no one has been able to establish any evidence of foul play, and yet, the run has still not been verified. As I alluded to before, there is much more to this story, and there is a reason that Lukuki has such a high level of proof for this time. It is a requirement for him specifically. This isn't the first time Lukuki has come out of nowhere to achieve an insanely difficult world record. It has happened before, and it wasn't very long ago, happening in May of this year. Bowser, it's up to you, man. It's up to you. No way! No freaking... Dude! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! On the 4th of May 2020, Lukuki claimed a new world record in Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, with a time of 7 minutes, 56 seconds, and 515 milliseconds. The crazy thing about this run is that it was his very first ever submitted for the game. He even claimed himself that this was the first time he had ever completed a single speedrun for The Lost Levels. I've been a speedrunner for over 20 years, and I can't remember a single instance of this ever happening in a heavily contested game. This claim is so bizarre that the other members of the community had no choice but to be immediately skeptical. Again, there was no direct evidence of cheating, but ultimately the run was rejected and would never be seen on the ranks. The moderation team of the Lost Levels provided a lengthy and detailed document outlining all of the factors that were considered when making their decision. One of the biggest oddities was the fact that the console used runs slightly slower than what should be expected. Super Mario Bros. is timed in part by using the Bowser pattern to determine how many frames have passed, and using this metric, the run was world record pace, but in real time, it was actually half a second slower. Even if it was accepted, it wouldn't be considered a world record due to this discrepancy. But one of the most important factors was Lukuki's history outside of speedrunning Super Mario Bros. In 2018, he claimed multiple world records in Mario Kart DS, which were later exposed as cheated runs. He essentially created tool-assisted speedruns and tried to pass them off as legitimate speedruns. As a result, he was banned from the Mario Kart DS community. It just so happens that speedrunning is such a huge niche that it's possible for a player to be banned in one game and then quietly move on to another without that new community having any idea about that player's past, which is exactly what happened here. The Super Mario Bros. community had no idea Lukuki was banned from competing in another game, and it only came to light after he claimed the world record. So this begs the question, what should communities do about players that were caught cheating in a completely different community? Should there be an outright ban from every game on the first instance of fake runs? If that is the case, it would be pretty difficult for one game to keep track of what's happening in every other game. It may even be impossible. In this particular case, Lukuki kept his name the same so it was much easier, but in theory, a player could simply change their handle and sneak into a different community unnoticed. I don't want to name names here, but there are plenty of examples of speedrunners getting caught cheating in one game and then simply moving to a new community. Some of them even becoming very highly ranked in their new game. 
and thus far, there appears to be no universally accepted rule about what to do in those situations. I have never found a community that explicitly outlines what to do in this situation in their community guidelines. To summarize, after Lukuki was banned from Mario Kart, he almost immediately moved on to Super Mario Brothers and started submitting runs there. He then claimed the world record for the lost levels on his very first ever speedrun, leading to a very involved investigation resulting in his time being rejected. The moderation team then placed very stringent requirements on further proof, insisting that a hand can be used, as well as showing the console and controller attached. But after these new rules were put in place, Lukuki never touched the game again, and he still doesn't even have a single run submitted on the rankings. Which in my opinion is strange for someone who was capable of achieving the world record on their very first completed run. Everything about Lukuki's claimed records are strange, but alas, there is no direct evidence of cheating. On top of this, all of the circumstantial evidence doesn't lean in his favor. And there was one critical moment after his most recent Super Mario Bros. world record that really stood out to me, as well as the other moderators. Oh yeah, by the way, you can press any button except for select and the pad to start the game in the triple corpse yeah that's pretty cool i don't know if people know that so i've shown cables oh yeah um the cable is going to the tv how do you show the cable is going to the tv i don't think it can that's gonna be too hard of a task but yeah at this point i think you're not you, you can't really Krilla37, who is one of the Super Mario Bros. moderators, told Lukuki to show the cables running from the Nintendo to the TV. Lukuki tries for about two seconds before covering up the camera and claiming that it would be too difficult. This seems incredibly suspicious. Imagine you have just tied one of the most popular and respected world records in all of speedrunning. The moderator of that game asks you to do something that seems pretty simple, but you refuse. This is after you've already had another world record rejected due to past cheating. If I were in that position, I would be jumping through whatever hoops were put in front of me in order to remove all doubt that my record was legitimate. At the end of the day though, this is all circumstantial. I honestly don't know if there was any foul play involved, and until hard evidence is revealed, no one does. The moderators still haven't made any public statements regarding the record, which was set almost two months ago. We might be in a situation where the record is permanently trapped in limbo, with no obvious way to escape. Either way, it seems as though Lukuki was never fated to hold the world record for long. With the moderators and the speedrunning community fixated on this ongoing investigation, another player was quietly working on his attempts. And on the 13th of November, 2020, this happened. Focus. <sighs> no way. Bowser, please! Holy cow! Dead, yes! Yes! 4-3-0! Oh my god! I lost a frame on X, I don't care! 455 to 430! Oh! Holy cow, dude! I did it! I did it! I did it! World record! World record! The speedrunner Nifsky obliterated the existing world record with a new time of 4 minutes, 55 seconds, and 430 milliseconds. This beat the record that Cosmic had set by over 0.2 seconds, which in the world of Super Mario is gigantic. Now, I do want to address the elephant in the room. Why is he playing on a keyboard? Well, for Super Mario Bros., emulation is an accepted and viable way to play the game. There is no discernible difference in the way the game plays between original hardware and emulation, so you are free to use whichever version you like. I know that many people will value the speedrun less if it isn't on the original console, but consider this. The Nintendo Entertainment System stopped being produced 25 years ago. 
As consoles and cartridges degrade, break, and are thrown away, the availability and reliability of such consoles is greatly reduced. This is a problem that is only going to get much worse. So restricting competition to only original consoles creates a huge barrier that is very short-sighted. In the event that emulation differs from original hardware, leaderboards can be split, which is what they did for Super Mario 64. But in this case, Super Mario Bros. really does play the same through an emulator as it does on console, so it's reasonable to lump them together. That being said, playing on original hardware is still the preferred method, and it's the choice that most speedrunners use, and it's what I personally favor as well. If you are familiar with Super Mario Bros. speedrunning, you will have heard the term frame rule before. A frame rule is the set amount of time that each level checks to see if you have reached the end before sending you to the next. In this case, each frame rule is 0.35 seconds, meaning that you can only gain or lose time in increments of that size. The exception to this is the final level because timing stops on the exact frame that Mario connects with the hammer. Saving a new frame rule is a massive deal, as it's essentially the only way a player can save significant time. Usually, it involves introducing a much more difficult strategy, and in the case of Nifsky's new record, it was 8-2 that allowed for a quicker frame rule. It really doesn't look like much, but the different technique used to jump over this pipe was the crucial change. The difficulty of this jump is extremely deceiving. It requires multiple frame-perfect and pixel-perfect jumps. On top of this, in order to save enough time, because these new jumps alone aren't enough, you need to execute an even more precise bullet bill glitch at the end of the stage, landing on the very front of the bullet bill, therefore completing the level on the earliest possible frame. Saving this extra frame rule on 8-2 is nothing short of amazing, and it was actually Nifsky's first ever run to do so. He just so happened to clutch the last two levels to finish it out. People are now wondering, are we close enough to 454 for it to be a realistic target? I think for a long time, 455 was seen as the last milestone that would ever be achieved. But now that the record is closer to 454 than 456, it's actually seeming pretty reasonable. There is another potential frame rule to be saved in 8-1 by using an extremely difficult fast acceleration at the start combined with a flagpole glitch at the end, and if you pair this with an almost perfect final level, you can save just enough time to get below 455. Nifsky has performed a sufficiently fast run in practice starting from 8-1 to result in a 454. All he would need to do now is do it in an actual attempt. I predict that because this new barrier is as close as it is, we will see more players starting to put serious effort into making it a reality. In this video, we covered a couple of very contentious issues. We looked at players cheating in one game and then moving straight on to another. We also highlighted the use of emulation for speedrunning. I am really curious to know what the general public thinks of this, so please put your thoughts in the comments. Also, if you've reached this far in the video, please do me a massive favor and follow me on Twitter. I am really trying to increase the reach I have on social media and it would be greatly appreciated. The link will be in the pinned comment. As always, thank you so much for watching, you absolute legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.